a wonderful start to the week thanks to Singapore shuttler Lo Kian Yu, who's crowned the badminton world champion. If you didn't stay up for last night's final in Spain, here's match point against India's Srikanth Kidambi. It's in, it's way in, and Lo Kian Yu of Singapore becomes the world champion. An amazing win capping off Kian Yu's run at the World Championships, which began with an upset over world number one Victor Axelsson in the opening round. And halfway around the world, Kian Yu's triumph was watched by his family. On the left, Kian Yu's parents and brother celebrating in their home in Penang, and on the right, his other brother in the college shirt witnessing the moment and going bonkers with his friends in Singapore. Kian Yu spoke to our sports correspondent, David Lee, on what being world champion means for him. I think this medal here, um, there's a lot of meaning to it. Like, all my sacrifices all along, I've been having like all this journey the career or uh, i mean it's not easy it's a very long long journey la. so i'm glad that this finally happened and yeah i'm glad that i actually won this medal and of course it's also a very good thing for singapore because um yeah it's, it means that singapore as a small nation we we could we could win such a big at such a big event um a world championship medal so yeah I'm, I'm happy to to be the one that do that to create the history. What do you think you did right this past week and for the matter the past few months? And what do you think you still need to improve on uh, as we move towards Paris 2024? I mean, fitness, mental, and of course consistency. That's what I've been trying to work on, and that's what I'm gonna continue to work on because to stay at the top is not easy. It's going to take a lot of consistency and I need to continue work on that in order to be even better than I am right now. And what went right this week or in the past few months? What went right, you know, that you went on such a sensational run? Uh, I mean, I trained with Victor for a month and I saw how he trained, how focused he was, how consistent he was. And after that, I just tried to bring it in my own game and... Um, as I played some competition that I was up and down, yeah, I screw up a few times, but I try my best to learn from it. So, yeah, I just keep trying to uh, really be better than the match yesterday and uh, yeah, just keep going and just never give up. You're coming back to Singapore soon. What is the first thing you will do when you reach Singapore or you want to do? Uh, I, I just want to lie on my own bed after showering, of course. Yeah, I miss my bed. <laughs> you can watch the full interview on straightstimes.com. Sports correspondent David Lee is here to tell us more about Kian Yu. So, David, he's the world champion about to face more challenges with a target on his back. We've just seen a little bit of your interview with Kian Yu. You've spoken with him several times before that. What's your impression of him? Is he mentally ready to take all of that on? Right, so Ken Yu is a great badminton player as we, all, we have all seen. And he's also a great person as well. He's happy-go-lucky, down to earth, and has shown great courage and calmness on the court over the past few months. So let me give you two examples. So he rolled his ankle actually in, in the quarterfinal win over Pranoy and bounced back to win his semifinal against Antonsen. And after that, he actually couldn't walk. He was on a wheelchair and his physio spent three hours from 10.30 to 1.30 in the morning trying to patch him up for the final. And he went out there and, and, and won the World Championship final. So understandably, the Singapore Badminton Association wanted to get him out uh, on the first flight back to assess his condition and give him the necessary treatment and, and upgraded him to business class. His first reaction was not to revel in his new new status and, and the perks, but to ask if the same could be done for his coach and his physio. This is the measure of the man. Is, is he mentally ready to take on his new status as world champion and have everybody try to beat him? Only time will tell. 
it won't be easy. Top players will, will no longer take him lightly. Nobody will. And the younger ones will aim to beat him, just like he aimed to beat the likes of Victor Exelsen and Kento Momota before. And, and people will now want to beat him so that they can say, hey, I beat a world champion. So like I said, it, it won't be easy, but this guy specializes in delivering the seemingly impossible. So yeah, let's see. Well, fingers crossed for Kian Yu. So let's talk about his style of play. You know, what is it about the way he plays that has uh, seen him beat the world numbers one and two and other higher ranked opponents as well, David? Right. He, he's fast. He's lightning fast. Uh, a Danish player, Hans Christian Wittinghus, put it this way. In badminton, there's fast, there's ginting fast, referring to an Indonesian player, and then there's Lokian Yu fast. So, so that's how fast he is and how high regard uh, the other players hold him. And, and while his smashes have always been his strength, he has now been able to add strong defense to his capabilities as well. Plus, he has a fearlessness about him. That calmness and courage I talked about earlier, you know, when he faces a higher ranked player, it's not like he's already beaten by his opponent's reputation, but he genuinely believes he stands a chance against anybody out there. And even when he's in a disadvantage, disadvantageous situation, like he was in the final, he was 9-3 down in the first game, 18-16 down in the second game, he doesn't panic, he finds solutions. And when he's up by big margin, he doesn't let up, he goes for the kill. And when you put all of these attributes together, he's pretty much unbeatable when he's at his best at least for now, because nobody seems to have an answer on how to overcome him. Well, David, as you know, it's not just about the athlete uh, himself, right? How can Kian Yu improve his support system moving forward? And what can our local sports bodies do in that area? Right, I think the Singapore Badminton Association and Singapore Sport Institute need to work together to carefully chart his program for the next three years if he is to contend for a medal at the 2024 Paris Olympics. I've said before, they need to be careful with the punishing calendar and his aggressive all-out style of play. It's mind-boggling to think how he has kept this up for every match this past week at the World Championship. But from now to the next Olympics, it's 32 months that we are talking about. That means managing which and how many tournaments he plays in and ensuring he gets proper recovery from every competition and from any niggling injury. Any kind of support he needs, physical fitness, mental health, opponent analysis, or even upgrading his spec scholarship tier. I think they should pull out all the stops to support our world champion's quest to achieve more sporting glory for Singapore. 